Uh, hi everyone. Uh, today we would like to uh, discuss or solve this nodal analysis question. Uh, basically here we will work with the concept of super node and as you can see here all the sources that we have are independent sources there is no dependent source in that uh, question so the question is ask us to find what is your vx what is the value of vx using nodal analysis now in nodal analysis basically we do not worried now at the beginning of the question about what is the requirement of the question what we worry about is to find the node voltages the voltage at each node of the question and once we are done with this then we can find or we can look what are the requirement in the questions and we can find it because the trick here in node analysis once i know the node voltages then i can find any quantity in the in the circuit so how to proceed first we set our reference so this is our uh, reference here v equal to zero now the reference was not given in the question but it's preferred to uh, select uh, the negative of the voltage supply to be your uh, your reference now count the other nodes in minus one nodes other than the reference so we'll have here one two three and four so we have basically four nodes so then we will assign a voltage variable to each node so we have v1 v2 v3 and v4 so basically this is how we prepare the question once the question is prepared now all we need to apply is kcl plus sometimes as we will see in this question the node voltages some of them are given to you if we have voltage supplies. So let's start. Start from the V1. Now V1 is basically the voltage between this node and the ground. And that is the, actually the meaning of the node voltages. is the voltage between the node and the reference point or the ground. So the voltage between this point and the ground is basically the voltage supply. So as simple as that, your V1 is equal to 20 volt. And this is your first equation. Then we move to V2 and V3. Now in V2 and V3, both also connected to a voltage supply. So we cannot apply KCL at V2 or at V3 because of the voltage supply. Otherwise, we have to introduce another unknown, which is the current here. And then we are increasing the size of the problem and there is no need. And here we will apply the concept of the super node. But before that, when you have two nodes between them, a voltage supply, you will get two equations for this. So the first equation is that V3 minus V2 is equal to 10 volt. This is my second equation. This is exactly like V1 minus zero is equal to 20 volt. That is exactly the same thing. The potential difference between these two points is equal to the voltage supply between them. And we said V3 minus V2 because V3 is connected to the plus sign and V2 is connected to the, to the negative sign. Then now we will apply the super node. So basically we look to the whole region here as if it is one point. And we'll see that we have one, two, three, and four branches then when i write my kcl i have to have four items in my equation so kcl at super node now as we mentioned before we can assume the currents or leaving all entering some entering some leaving as far as you apply KCL correctly, which currents enter the node equal current leave the node, it doesn't matter what direction you are assuming. Except for any current source, you cannot touch it. You have to keep it as it is. So here, the current to the far left, we have V2 minus V1 divided by 20. Now, V1 itself is 20 volts, so I don't need to write it as a V1. We can keep it as 20 volt. Plus, V2 divided by 20, actually it's V2 minus zero, because this is the voltage here is zero over 20. So these are the two items at the side of V2. Let's go to the side of V3, then plus the current that goes down here, 
v3 minus 0 divided by 10. Don't write this as vx, okay? Don't try to find the unknowns in the question at this stage. At this stage, you have a very clear objective. Find all node voltages. So far, we found two. This is the reference V equal to zero, and this is equal to 20. We need to find the rest. Plus V3, the current that goes to the far right, minus V4 divided by five is equal to, to zero. So the least common denominator is 20. So I'll multiply everything times 20. So we'll have V2 minus 20 plus V2 plus 2v3 plus 4 times v3 minus v4, and this is equal to 0. Let's add terms. So we have two terms for v2. So 2v2, we have 2v3 uh, and 4v3, so plus 6v3 minus 4v4 and we have 20, this is equal to 20. So if I divide everything by two, reduce the size of the equation, this is always good. This is V2 plus three V3 minus two V4 equal to 10. And this is my third equation. So now we have three equations. Now we have, uh, we need one more to, to solve for the four unknowns, although now typically we have only three unknowns. So, we, so basically we have a question two and three. Now, the last point is node number uh, V4. So KCL at V4. So assume the currents are leaving. So we don't care what was the assumption of the current in the step before that. Okay, so we'll have here uh, V4 minus V3 divided by five plus the current that goes down here, V4 divided by 10. And then the nine amps actually is entering the node. So this is will equal to, to nine. Now I will multiply again by the least common denominator. I multiply by 10. So we'll have two V4 minus V3 plus V4 is equal to 90. Then we'll have minus 2V3 plus 3V4 is equal to 90. And this is my fourth equation. Here, our electrical engineering part finished. Now, all we need to do now is basically math, algebra, linear algebra, how to deal with equations. So basically, I have three equations, three unknowns, V2, V3, and V4. We agree that V1 now is known to us, so I don't need to worry about it. So basically, you can eliminate the variables. One way is to eliminate the variables. So from this equation, from equation number two, I can find V2 in terms of V3, come to equation three, substitute V2 here, and then you will have two equations, three and four, in terms of V3 and V4. Again, eliminate one of the, them, one of the variables to find the, the last one. So basically from equation two, from equation number two, which is V3 minus V2 equal to 10, we can say that your V2 is equal to V3 minus, minus 10. This is basically, again, this is equation number two, the same equation, we just change it a little bit. Now I will substitute this equation two in equation number three. So I will come here, take V2 and substitute its value. So I will substitute two in, in equation number number three. So we will have, the, let me rewrite the equation again. So we'll have here basically V2 plus three V3 minus two V4 is equal to 10. This is basically my equation number three. Now I will substitute the value of V2 with its value. So we will have V3 minus 10. This is your V2 plus three V3 minus two V4 is equal to 10 V3 plus 3 V3. So this is 4 
v3 minus basically minus 2 v4 equal to 20 i will divide everything by 2 so we'll have uh, 2 v3 minus v4 is equal to equal to 10 and this is will be my equation number number five now uh, let me write down the my other equation here this equation number four okay so my equation number four is minus 2 v3 plus 3 v4 is equal to 90 this is my equation number four now you can see clearly here if i add these two equations so add we'll add these two together so we will have this will cancel you will have 2 v4 is equal to 100 so your v4 will equal to 100 divided by 2 which is equal to 50 50 volt okay now we need to find your v3 so we can substitute in any of these two equations so substitute v4 in 5 now equation 5 says that 2 v3 minus v4 equal to 10 or 2 v3 equal to 10 plus v4 v4 is 50 so this is equal to 10 plus 50 which is equal to 60 so it means that your v3 is equal to 30 30 volt and from this we can find v2 as well your v2 is equal to v3 minus 10 which is equal to 30 minus 10 which is equal to 20 volt so now we found all node voltages now what is the requirement in the question we need to find vx basically vx is the voltage between this point and this point this is my reference v equal to zero and this is my v3 so your vx is equal to your v3 which is equal to 30 30 volt